You're still getting Wi-Fi 7 to work, I think. <laughs> Let me share uh, what's Wi-Fi 8 about. Um, I'll talk about why it's happening if I have time. So the, the action started somewhere in 2022. You will see a timeline uh, a little later. And I would say the most uh, interesting target is 10 gigabits per second on the air. And finally, they realized that the clients would not go more than two SS. So instead of four SS, eight SS, and sometimes you see 16 SS, now they've realized that, hey, our target should be with two SS what we should aim for. So that's the target. But I think then it gives rise to, should we become UHT WLAN? Well, then they said, OK, we had talked about some of these things in Wi-Fi 7 era. So let's also put them together and put some you know, fancy numbers to match the predicted 6G goals coming in 2030. That's the competition. Uh, one millisecond with the 5G latency goals, now it's one tenth of that. So put all this together, and what we have is ultra high reliability wireless LAN, not UHT, but UHR. And for those of you wanting to know the extension, that's BN. So as I said, this will be probably the most uh, important goal from a big ticket numbers perspective. Uh, there was debate initially, this happened around 2023, so there was a lot of fight between two camps. Should we bring 60 gigahertz in? As you know, it's a bit of a non-mainstream. It's now not part of the official standards, but there's a separate group, and they might bring products in the Wi-Fi 8 era with 60 gigahertz as a part of the multi-link. We don't know. Time will tell. Of course, this group might not be so interested in P2P, but there are lots of handset guys who are interested. There was talk uh, yesterday that Wi-Fi 7 dropped out this, so they're going to try and bring this on to address some of these uh, reliability concerns. And some of the latency concerns, especially with roaming, is getting addressed. How much it's going to become real, time will tell. So let me quickly look at some features which have been agreed. Uh, there are a few other features which I couldn't put in. So there is power save for the station. There's power save for the AP as well. A better utilization of large bandwidths. And maybe I'll touch upon this. I will not touch upon this because it's been dreamy about this from 11N and so on and so forth. Depending on the time, I might touch a few things. So this probably could come in. Uh, all stations want to just be in 20 megahertz, one SS mode, and then jump to their real bandwidth, real spatial streams when they need to actually process that. So you can, those of you who've been following the standard, there is an EMLSR mode in uh, Wi-Fi 7, which uh, Ben uh, you know, was pointing out that the iPhone in this trace didn't say it was supporting, but in other places it said it supported. Uh, there's also spatial multiplexing power save, which has been around from 11N, 11AC days. So this is a kind of a combination of all of that. Be in the basic bandwidth, basic spatial stream, and jump to your high-capable stuff when you really need it. There is also a lot of discussion right now. They have not finalized this because there's a lot of pressure for AP guys also to save power. Uh, big bandwidths are coming, at least in the retail environments. As you know, preamble puncturing addresses some of the challenges when uh, you don't have some of the non-primary channels not available. You could play around with that and do puncture those and then do some things. Uh, I will show some preamble punctured captures later today in the deep dive. But now we are going to say that even if primary 20 megahertz becomes unavailable, you can still use the rest of the bandwidth. So this is called as non-primary channel access where you could, again, coexistence is going to be a major challenge, and there are plenty of rules about this, but watch out for some of this, at least in six gigahertz or high bandwidth five gigahertz. Uh, I think there was talk on OFDMA and how we are struggling with that. For those of you who know, Wi-Fi 7 has an MRU, which is really not active in the OFDMA stuff. Now, they realize that, and one of the reasons, apart from the scheduling, et cetera, is look at what power levels you can get in 6 gigahertz LPI for a 52-tone RU. This is because of the LPI per megahertz PSD rules in some of the countries. So to kind of fight this, what they have done is saying that we'll take the 52 tones, and, which is 4 megahertz approximately, and distribute the tones over a much larger bandwidth so I can get actually higher power transmitted, because otherwise the uplink powers are just not going to work. This is another reason why OFDMA is not so popular in some of those other things. Of course, in 20 megahertz, there are some countries which face some challenges. 5 gigahertz is probably the safest bet right now. 
What is multi-AP coordination? A lot of AP vendors do coordinate amongst their APs for doing lots of stuff, but especially the initial target is homes and so on, where they want to coordinate a little deeper on the Fi. This was well uh, thought out in Wi-Fi 7, but they pulled out of it because they knew that even handling MLO was going to be difficult. So why bring in another thing and then not uh, succeed? So it's coming in as a possibility in Wi-Fi 8 uh, with coordinated OFDMA, coordinated spatial reuse, coordinated time. All these things are on the table. Uh, Spec-wise, a lot of work done already in 11b as an example. One of the APs can become what is called as a sharing AP, and it can give those resources to the shared AP. Here is an example of a coordinated OFDMA, which was actually agreed in 11BE till a certain time, uh, till it dropped out. Here you see that this AP wins access and says, hey, you can use this part, you can use this part. Similarly, they can do it on the time axis as well, okay? Those of you know spatial reuse from Wi-Fi 6, it never really worked in the way the standard planned it in practice. Now they're trying to explicitly have coordination between the APs, saying that, hey, I'm using this channel of, with this much time, et cetera. You can also use it at this power level at this time, et cetera. So there's explicit coordination. This is called coordinated spatial reuse. So what are the timelines? So as you know, now I have time, I see that three minutes, so I can talk about why Wi-Fi 8 is happening because we haven't cracked Wi-Fi 7. And it looks like we haven't cracked Wi-Fi 6 because we had the data about OFTMA. I was jokingly telling Peter that you should look at MU MIMO as well because that has been from Wi-Fi 5 and we haven't still cracked uh, that part as well. So why it's happening is and when you talk to the chipset vendors, they'll tell you that they have this chip cycle where they go to the new technologies and uh, so on and so forth. It's a massive hardware design effort. And what they want is for all the new efforts, they want a new number. That is either a Wi-Fi 8 or a 9 or 11BN. They don't want to do a new design bringing all their talents for just an upgraded Wi-Fi 7. That's not going to cut with their marketing teams for the efforts. So for all the efforts that they put into improving things, et cetera, they want a new number. And so with Wi-Fi 8, you get hopefully better hardware. And probably the real benefits of Wi-Fi 8 is going to be clean up. So we saw that. MLO in iPhone was probably not showing us the improvement. There will be some software upgrades which will get us somewhere, but probably if MLO works, and OFDMA in my opinion hasn't still worked the way it was planned out to be till today, if we get it right, MLO might come and do better in the Wi-Fi 8 era rather than the Wi-Fi 7 era because the way things happen is they don't want to do whole scale improvements on top of Wi-Fi 7 with a new generation chipset. So where are we? As I said, things started around 2022. And then the first kind of uh, targets and the names got assigned in 2023. And we have had meetings. In fact, the latest specification framework also talks about MLO roaming. Because don't expect MLO roaming to be smooth today or in the Wi-Fi 7 era, don't expect it to be very smooth. That's probably likely to happen closer to the Wi-Fi 8, 8 era, uh, because today, if you roam from one AP with multiple links to another AP, don't expect the multiple links to carry over smoothly. And I don't think that problem is going to be addressed very soon. So that might become better in the Wi-Fi 8 era, and with multiple AP connections, and the links getting transferred across APs, you would expect hopefully better reliability, and that's where the UHR comes in. Will all devices support 10 gigabit per second? As you know, in Wi-Fi, that's just one profile of the specification which needs to support 10 gigabit per second, but at least they've set the benchmark so you can expect multi-link 160 megahertz or 320 megahertz to be supported. When are we likely to see certification? So there it is, some 27. So. Uh, maybe WLPC uh, 2026, we'll have that Wi-Fi training or deep dive, okay? And if you are a 60 gigahertz fan, keep an eye, maybe some products will integrate that. Thank you.